chance for an in-person commencement. More on when and where graduates will receive their diplomas this year. Later, Portage County held a one-day vaccine clinic. TV2 was at the, at the event and spoke with residents who got the shot. Exclusive interviews with new USG members, including next year's president. Hear what they said only on TV2. And how a group of fashion students founded a new organization focused on photo shoots, fashion, and more. You won't want to miss it, only on TV2 News. This is TV2 News. We begin tonight with the breaking announcement sent out by the university earlier that the spring 2021 commencement ceremony will be held in person. That's where we begin tonight. I'm Jenna Borthwick. And I'm Troy Pearson. Again, the school announced that its 2021 graduates can expect an in-person ceremony. Little is known at this time, but here's what we do know. The ceremonies will be held outdoors during the week of May 10th for all colleges and degrees. The current location chosen for the event is the Centennial Court Green off of Midway Drive. The university stated that this will allow for more social distancing measures. Now we'll look at the two-week graduation event. It begins with the advanced degree ceremony for all colleges and campuses on Monday the 10th, ending with the ceremony for graduates of the College of Podiatric Medicine on the 21st. The full schedule can be viewed at the link below. KSU President Todd Diakin also said the school will welcome back 2020 grads for their own ceremony during the homecoming week in the fall. Today, the county held one of two mass vaccination clinics coming up, this one at the Parta Bus Garage. Of course, at the clinic, the overall message was to get a COVID shot. Community members reacted, and now it looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. All done. Keep, keep it up for a second. That's it. Today, Access Point Community Health Center teamed up with Parta to vaccinate about 500 people at the bus garage off of Summit Road. It's a blessing to be able to offer this to the community. Uh, it's wonderful that we had such a robust turnout and we're going to be ramping up and scaling up what we're going to be doing here. After lunchtime, long lines formed and people waited for their chance to get the COVID shot in batches of 30. And the general consensus was optimistic. Feeling pretty good. I didn't feel nothing on the shots. Feeling fine, just like when I come here. The last year of the pandemic has been a rough haul for many. This is an opportunity, I think, for them to, to finally, you know, finally have a little bit of normalcy back in their life. And this normalcy can mean a lot of different things. I've been working from home for, for a year and was definitely looking forward to getting the vaccine as soon as possible. I'm going to be able to spend more time with my family and do different things, and it makes me happy. But getting the vaccine won't change the precautions taken by some people who got it today. I've been home, grocery store, and that's about it. <laughs> I'm still going to still do the same stuff I've been doing even though I got the vaccine. Access Point is one of three federally qualified health centers in Ohio to have direct access to the federal stockpile of the vaccine which Frizone says is fairly limitless. I could get 10,000 doses in a week if I wanted it. I just don't have the person power to get 10,000 doses out because this stuff you know, has to be used really quickly. It can't sit in a refrigerator. You know, it has, when you get it, you have to get it in people's arms. The goal is to have more mass vaccination clinics in the future and find more ways to get locals to them. Uh, through the state of Ohio's uh, Rides for Community Immunity Program, which provides some funding to help support the cost of transportation to vaccination sites. I think it's a great location and uh, we're uh, looking for ways to help transport people to clinics. Everyone vaccinated today will be scheduled for their second dose on April 15th. Reporting for TV2 News, I'm Jenna Borthwick. Thanks for that report, Jenna. The Max Dex vaccination site planned for Chapel Hill Mall will, new will move to a new location. The change was made uh, because of infrastructure work being done on the mall's property, which would have been interrupted by the vaccine clinic. The site's new home, the Summit County Fairgrounds, is less than three miles away from the original site. The site located in Talmadge will open in late March. No other details have been released. COVID cases across Ohio continue to fall as more counties are moving to orange and even yellow zones on Ohio's public health advisory map. Five Ohio counties moved into the yellow zone this week. Governor DeWine stated when cases hit 50 per 100,000 residents, that all coronavirus health orders will be rolled back. Portage County is still one of 60 red counties, indicating very high exposure and spread. 
after Ohio announced its plans to lower the vaccine eligibility age, Kent State released plans to host a vaccine clinic every week at the Fieldhouse. Our reporter Kyle Vassell joins us now with what you need to know. Hi. Thanks, Jenna. According to Governor DeWine, anyone 16 and older will be vaccine eligible beginning March 29th. Earlier this week, the school announced plans for a vaccination clinic at the Kent State Fieldhouse. Here's what we know so far. The weekly field house clinic will begin next Tuesday, the 23rd, and will run through the spring. The clinic salaries will be 10 to 6 every Tuesday. Those eligible under Ohio's vaccination plan will be able to sign up for an appointment at the site. This means Kent State students won't be eligible until the 30th after the state's Phase 2D plans rolls out the 29th. The university partnering with the Portage County Health Department to put on the clinic. Appointments are open to all residents. To register, you can visit the Portage County Health Department website. Again, registering does not guarantee you an appointment. The department will call you when the spot opens up. TP2 reached out to the university to see if students who are temporary residents of the county, either living on campus or near campus in Kent, will be eligible. They did not respond. A town hall will take place Monday the 22nd at 4. The university press release says that the virtual event will help answer any questions surrounding the vaccination clinic. We will keep you updated as we learn more information going forward. Reporting in Franklin Hall, I'm Kyle Vassell. Good evening, Kent State and all of Portage County. I'm Nick Summer. Now, it's been a pretty dreary day lots of rain but that looks to stop heading into tonight right now currently you can see it is 38 degrees and rainy now we will be experiencing some more rain heading into the weekend but sun will be coming now right now in Kent like I said 38 we're still in that high 30 range kind of still falling back into those winter temperatures across all Northeast Ohio now tonight we will be seeing a large amount, 60% uh, chance of rain uh, starting at 8 p.m. and falling back down to a low of 25. Like I said, kind of getting back into that uh, winter weather, kind of regressing here, but we will be seeing some more uh, sun and warmer weather coming this week. Now, we have se been seeing rain um, earlier this evening, currently right now, with a high of 42. Temperature will be dropping, though, slightly down to the high 30s and then more rain starting tonight at around 12 a.m. That is all I have for you now. Tune in later for a weather recap and to see your seven day forecast. President Biden will be rolling into Columbus next week. We have details on why he is visiting the Buckeye State right after this break. I feel like, like her heartbeat is like same speed as mine. And I think we have this like deep connection, this heart connection in her heart that there's, there's room for me and mom. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. It's a sensory thing. It's a thing with Asperger's. She's really good with Anya. I've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns, like she's from a different planet and this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like, you know, it's gonna be cool. She's my superhero. Good job, kitty cat. When we adopted Lucky, we discovered all the wonderful things that make her unique. Lucky's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly she's pure love. A crash involving an Amazon Prime delivery truck and a car was backing up traffic along Main Street in Kent this afternoon. The accident happened at around 2 p.m. at the intersection of Lincoln Street and Main Street. The front campus corridor of Main Street is one of the most dangerous roads in Portage County and 12 percent of citywide crashes that happen in that stretch of road. Plans to improve travel on Main Street were introduced in 2019, but it is likely that funding will not be available at least until 2024. 
The undergraduate student elections wrapped up yesterday. Our reporter Kelsey Drennan is live outside of the USG office in the Student Center with information about your new representatives. Hi Kelsey. Hi Jenna. The election is over for undergraduate student government at Kent State and the results are in. The elections ran from 8 Tuesday morning to yesterday at 5. Chaslyn Jackson was elected the new president, replacing Tara Moore, and Jackson's election marks the fourth black person to run USG as president. She says she wants to be an advocate for people who have experienced sexual assault and give them the resources that they need. I'm really advocating for inclusivity of services and resources for our marginalized students who are affected by sexual assault because those social identities, those, inter those intersectional identities, they're different experiences. So you have to be mindful of which preventative tactics and um, after the fact tactics actually help these students here at a PWI. And Eric Gomez was elected the new director of governmental affairs. And he says he wants to be an advocate for students of all different backgrounds at Kent State. Gomez says that he wanted to run for office after he helped advocate for weekly COVID testing at Kent State. And we've advocated for weekly testing and just making sure the residence halls are safe for students. And, um, you know, after that, I realized I was super passionate about student advocacy and, and just helping students being there for students. While the president and the directors of USG have been picked, we are still waiting to see who the senators for the College of the Arts and the College of Art and Sciences will be. USG says that they are still being determined. Reporting from the USG office, I'm Kelsey Drennan. Welcome back to your Thursday night weather report. I'm Nick Summer. Now, starting into early tomorrow, we're going to be seeing those low 20 or mid 20 temperatures, kind of winter temperatures with a high of 36 going into early afternoon tomorrow, a little bit of sun but mostly cloudy with a little bit of rain as well. Um, now into the early afternoon tomorrow as well, mostly sunny all day, that's a great sign, um, with a high of 43 in the early afternoon, no rain, which is great, but uh, it will be a little cloudy. Now this Saturday, we will have a very warm uh, spring-like day with a high of 57, very sunny, not as cool, very low winds. Um, it will be kind of a longer day. The sun won't be setting till late, um, almost 8 o'clock, so if you are free and not working Saturday, it's a great day to go outside um, and enjoy the weather. Now, your seven-day forecast, as you can see, those two highlighted days right there, Saturday and, Saturday and Sunday, big days for um, our weather here in Kent and Northeast Ohio. Um, the high of 68, actually, I'm sorry, a high of 71 all the way into next week um, right behind me, but mostly sun, as you can see, which is great. Today, tonight is the last amount of rain we will have for a while uh, sun all the way through next week a little bit of cloudy but it will be that going into sort of april spring weather with um, a high of 70 and high of 60s all starting next week so next week is a great week to be outside uh, and enjoy the weather with your fellow uh, golden flashes that is all i have for your thursday night weather report i've been nick summer enjoy that sunshine kent state Thanks, Nick. Governor DeWine announced today that the date of the special election to replace Representative Marsha Fudge in Ohio's 11th district. Fudge now serves in President Biden's cabinet as the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. The special election to find her replacement will be held on November 2nd with a primary election date of August 3rd. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost is suing to block part of the COVID-19 stimulus package. The bill prevents states from using the money to offset tax cuts, which Yost argues is unlawfully restrictive. 21 other Republican state attorneys have also threatened legal action against the relief package. And President Biden is set to visit Ohio next week as part of the Help is Here tour. Biden will stop in Columbus to discuss how the COVID relief package will lower health care costs for families. The exact location of the tour stop has not yet been released. The IRS extended the deadline to file your 2020 taxes. The change is due to a backlog of tax filings remaining from the 2019 tax year, as well as to give people more time to file amid COVID-19 pandemic. The new due date for taxes will be May 17th, as opposed to the original date of April 15th. And the man accused of killing eight people at 
at Metro Atlanta Massage Parlors was scheduled to appear in a Cherokee count court today, but did not. The 21-year-old's attorney requested the hearing be canceled, giving no explanation for why he made the request. The suspect faces eight counts of murder and one count of aggravated assault following shootings at three different Atlanta spas Tuesday. Atlanta police say the shootings weren't about race, a claim Georgia investigators are now looking into. He understood um, the gravity of it, and he was pretty much fed up and kind of at the end of his rope, and, um, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. A senseless violence in Atlanta that took the lives of six Asian American women. While the investigation is ongoing and we wait for more information, this comes during a time when violence and attacks against Asian Americans are on the rise. From last night. Information on new weekly fashion photo shoots organized by students up ahead. One, two, three. Ah! you now and AARP is here to help find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving what to expect when you're expecting a teenager today we're talking about how to wake up your teen and this works literally every time good kisses good kisses you heard how loud I, know, I, heard, I heard I heard it wasn't you it was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Hello and good evening, Portage County. I'm your sports anchor, Mackenzie Flume. The action is in full force this weekend as baseball and softball host their first Mid-American Conference games of the season. Let's take a look. Tomorrow afternoon, the Flashes baseball welcomes the Northern Illinois Huskies for a four-game weekend series. The Flashes are 5-1 on home turf and are looking to start out action play on top. Justin Mickness' efforts during last week's home stretch earned him Mac Player of the Week after going 6-12 with 7 RBIs. Mickness added a 3-run triple during Friday's game and a grand slam on Saturday. Play begins Friday at 3 p.m. Saturday's doubleheader will start at 1 p.m. And the final game on Sunday will also begin at 1. And the Kent State softball team also opens conference play this weekend against Toledo. This is the first time in 683 days since the Diamond at Dix has seen action. The Flashes are 3-10 in non-conference play with a brutal schedule playing five top 20 teams and four more against teams who received votes in this weekend's USA Today coaches pool. Standout players for Kent include senior Kenneth Goff, who is batting 398, and freshman Jessica Lebo, who ranks second in MAC strikeouts per seven innings and third in total strikeouts. The series opener is scheduled for a doubleheader Saturday at 1 and 3, and Sunday at 12 and 2. And the Kent State women's soccer team is currently in action at Dick Stadium. 
They are currently trailing Ohio Bobcats 2-0 in the second half. Kent State has taken more shots than Ohio, but have not been able to find the back of the net. The Flashes will try and make a comeback, and if they can, they will move on to 3-1 on the season. Up next for the team is a trip to Bowling Green on Sunday at 2. And the Cavs were in action last night in Cleveland. Though it was a close game, the Cavs were able to get the win. Let's take a look. Fourth quarter play was when things really started heating up with a pass out to Jason Tatum. He's going to boogie his way into the paint and fade away for two. That's five made shots in a row for Jason. Jalen Brown drives up with some fancy footwork, stops, turns, and floats in for two. Now Darius Garland drives in, nothing there, but he's going to pass it out to Sexton on top. Sexton drives in, gets open by the foul line, and throws it up for two. Colin Sexton doing what he does best and making way. Out to Garland, he's flying by Boston's defense to put it up for two. Now with 2.20 left to play, Garland gets the Celtics' missed basket rebound on a fast break. Bounce pass to Isaac, who gets up for two. And the Cavs in bonus, Sexton drives in and gets the one to help the Cavs lead. It seemed as though last night the Cavs stole the luck from the Celtics with a final score of 110 to 117. And that's all I have for sports tonight. Stay informed with up-to-date Kent State sports by following us on Twitter at TV2KSU Sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Coming up, see how a group of fashion students at Kent State collaborate on a weekly basis to organize unique photo shoots. Being high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. And even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. I have a mentor, and she convinced me to continue my education. No one receives a diploma alone. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. See on page four that the projections need to be blood. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Welcome back. This week, 90 million Americans received their stimulus checks. We took to Twitter to see what you guys are spending your checks on. A majority say they will save, for the, save the $1,400, while many others say they will spend it on necessities that might include food, rent, or bills. Our poll will be open until tomorrow afternoon, so head to our Twitter, at Kent Wired, to tell us how you will use your check. And last semester, a group of fashion students decided to form their own student-run organization that focuses on creating collaborative content. I tagged along on one of their photo shoots to learn more. On a chilly spring morning in Paris, Ohio, a group of fashion students participate in a photo shoot on a golf course. These girls represent SOCAB, a new student-run organization that focuses on making creative and collaborative fashion content. This is a place to test out things regardless of like what kind of career path you're aiming for or what kind of like major you are or what things you're interested in. It's just like, this is a place where you can try things out. One outlet these students are using to promote SOCAB is a podcast show on Spotify. They also aspire to collaborate with other students with different majors to diversify their platform. We thought 
um, you know, we wanted to start this podcast, and so it would be great to, um, you know, incorporate it under SOCAB because it would just really kind of get the word out about um, the organization. And then um, we were thinking it would probably just be Zara and um, me, but then if other people want to come on, be a guest, host an episode or something, you know, that could be a whole nother platform that we spread SOCAB on. SOCAB is in the middle of creating its own website to host its portfolio of content, but for now they utilize social media apps like Instagram to showcase some of their photo shoots and outfits. I think SOCAB is something that can stay in Kent, but each and, wo each and every one of us can take with us. So it's definitely something that's very open to everyone. It doesn't have to be only people from Kent State, or it doesn't only have to be in Kent State. So. I definitely think it's something we'll all take with each other and also like just the experience of SOCA as well. Reporting for TV2 News, I'm Troy Pearson. Well, it really looked like they were taking some use of this nice weather and maybe some of their downtime during the pandemic to still be creative and do some things outside. Oh, of course, I completely agree with that. It was really nice to go out uh, with them at like 5 in the morning, about like 40 minutes oh south my of gosh. here, and just I'm like see sure that sunrise and everything. It was really nice. So. Sunrise would have been good, but I'm not sure I could get up that early. Oh, so. yeah, of course, <laughs> me neither. That's why I only did it once, and I probably won't go out again. But it, it was fun to see them be creative, as, like you said. So, Well, that's about all we have for you guys tonight. Um, be sure to stick with us at Kent Wired for um, you know more updates and especially our social media at Kent Wired as well to stay up to date on local and national headlines. And don't forget to tune in to our entertainment show The Agenda tonight at 9. I'm Troy Pearson. And I'm Jenna Borthwick. Have a great Thursday night, Portage County. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. Roll over. Can't high five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... Her. I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. I don't remember how it started. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Julie was always a, a voracious reader. She'd carry two novels on an airplane because she'd read one on a three, four hour ride. And at some point, I began to notice that she would read a page and couldn't remember what she had just read and she'd have to go back and read it again. I don't remember much these days after I read, but less does for me and I love it. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. 
Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me.